Okay, so we're going to do, I um, thought I'd do a tutorial on mixing and mastering an EPIC hybrid track. So electronic mixed with um, traditional orchestral. Uh, in this one I also have some Mideastern samples I'm using, some winds and some plucking samples. There's the uh, Dudek and the Zerna and the Ney, which is a flute. So I also have some drones, uh, the Tambura and uh, Santur, which is uh, Indian, um, kind of like a um, del hammered dulcimer. And yeah, so I thought it'd be good to go through all the different, how I did it as far as... Um, the stems that I ended up um, generating and I'll talk about my process as we go along but let's just look at I organized this in stems here so it's a little easier or rather you know groups of of instruments so we have the Mideastern plucked and wind instruments the uh, piano uh, scratch track. I usually start with a scratch track of uh, the melody and things like that. And sometimes I'll leave it in there. Other times I'll take it out depending on what's happening. Then we have the sound design. I have some guitars happening. Some distorted guitars in one part. A synth pad. Uh, the uh, percussion loops. Standard percussion. We have a uh, choir, strings, some harp, a harp run here. Brass and some winds. So the way I'm going to structure this is, um, so I'm going to, let me just refer to my notes here, but we have the three big elements of this piece actually are the melodic mid-eastern things that are happening, uh, the mid-eastern plucks and percussion, and then finally strings. And the rest are kind of more coloristic things like the um, using winds and, and choir more for color uh, reinforcement but the main parts of the piece are the mid-eastern things and the strings and I should also mention that this was um, a pitch I did for an Assassin's Creed um, trailer and I, di I didn't end up getting the gig but I just I'm happy with the track so hopefully this will um, be instructive for people as far as how you mix all these different elements because it's pretty pretty difficult to mix this stuff if you don't know what you're doing because there are so many layers and there's a lot of things you have to keep in mind so those are the three big elements um, and then we're going to talk about the melody how I have it switching from winds to strings to choir and, and just the arc of the melodic material we're going to talk about the uh, plucking stuff, the atmosphere. Also, I'm going to go into panning and reverb with everything, and EQ, the choices I made, EQ-wise. So we'll, we're going to get into all that. Um, and then the sound design, which is very important in these things. So we're going to talk about that. So then after I write the piece and after I organize everything, I like to, um, whether or not I'm using it, someone else who's going to mix it or I'm doing it myself I like to um, generate the stems for each group and then mix the stems and automate things like that so I do that regardless of whether um, I have to deliver stems to a mixer or if I'm doing it myself I like I just like to see things like that it's a lot easier to get a handle on automation and things when you have groups at the end uh, when you stem out like that so I'll show you that and I'll open up the stem session later so we can talk about that um, but right now we're going to get into the, the um, each individual instrument but before we go any further I'm going to actually play the track for you okay so I changed the lighting here hopefully that's better so let's listen to the uh, full track here and I'll try to uh, um, 
scroll around and to the key elements that are happening here, if I can. Okay, so here's here's a full track here. Okay, so let's let's talk about it here. We got, you know, if we go back to what I was talking about earlier, and how I think of this, I mean, the, the like I said, the core of this piece is the Mid Eastern winds type stuff um, and um, Indian instruments. So let's let's focus on that for a second. <coughs> I'm going to close everything else, except let me just show you this pad here. We're going to take it in sections. So this first section is sort of the introduction, or, you know, we'll call it the A section. Actually, let's call it the intro, because the melody gets more established in the um, A section here. So before we talk about the melodic material and the, the plucking stuff I have happening, I have this texture thing that I think I may have actually started with this to get the sort of try to get the um, you know the pad kind of this sort of atmosphere um, tonality here which is just like a drone but let's listen to just that by itself <laughs> that with these. We have some drones happening here too. The tambura, which is actually a, um, yeah, we have the tambura and a sitar drone, which I can't remember. I think I use, yeah, I use Ra for that, which is an old library, but it still, it still works on, on this, um, because I think it's 16-bit. I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's... um. Yeah, it's not 64-bit. Um, the library, so... Anyway. So, and I use... Oh, before I talk about this. I use some gravity stuff here. 
and some Desert Winds, um, which I really like this library. I also use the Dodec from this, but this is the uh, Desert Echoes patch. So combine that with these. I got a kind of cool. So at that point, and let me bring in, so now I'll bring in some of this other stuff here. I'll bring in all these. Let you hear this. The sound design stuff is not. So let's hear it with, with the um, melodic and the plucking and then also the that atmospheric kind of stuff. <laughs> some pitch bend stuff here so that's kind of important to try to so you'll see what I do here Before we move on from this first section, the intro, um, let me just bring in all the uh, other elements here. So there's a piano, right, which doubles the centaur, which is this line. Oh, sorry. Right? So that's doubling that line. We also have this percussion thing happening here. It's called sleigh bells, but it's not really. It's actually this um, called Chang Chang thing. It's a metal shaker type thing. But I put um, let me just do this for a second. I put a delay on it. So let's let's check it out with the delay here. So use the H delay. It's a ping pong delay. So that adds a cool kind of because we're going to talk about some panning effects. But I like like what that does here. A little sound design thing here happening. Check this out. Right. All right, so at this point, I wanted to fill out this. Well, let's first listen to the melody here, which is the Zerna and the Dudek. But actually, I filled it out with some strings here. So I doubled the melody with um, some violins. CSS, the violins, and the viola. Cinematic studio strings. <coughs> right, so it fills out. The strings help reinforce this Mideastern type of sound. Before I show you what Oh, we're gonna solo just the strings, but before I do that, let's let's just solo this uh, the Mid Eastern plucky and you know melody stuff. <laughs> Saws, which is it's a similar thing to the Centaur. It's like a hammered dulcimer type thing. Yeah. 
so now what I did was to to layer this and to, to make it um, I reinforced it with uh, with the strings here we'll talk about percussion after but so let's listen to just the strings for this section All right, so the main thing that's happening here is you have the melody reinforced, and you have these, um, you have that um, the plucked um, thing. I, I doubled that with the low strings. So there's nothing really harmonic happening. It's more um, the bass with this this lower line and the melody. So let's. Sorry, let's um right. So the kind of short strings here in contrast to this longer melody. Right, so that's that. Now let's what's happening in the percussion here? Okay. So I have some loops that I use and sometimes I use this just when I'm writing and then I decide whether or not I'm gonna keep it in there and do my own rhythms but sometimes it helps to get you sort of kick starts your the sound here um, so I think I use deep percussion beds for this so let's listen to this loop here so it's not exactly what I wanted but I, I, I kept it in there anyway because it's a similar feel to what I wanted so just looking to, to get the feel right So we'll keep that in there. And then let's hear it with what I did in the percussion here, and then I'll show you some of that. So you have that Chang Chang delay there. I like putting some metallic stuff on top of the lower percussion so I always think of percussion as highs and lows here you have to think of you know try to fill out all that space especially for something epic like this so let's go individually through some of this percussion stuff. so that's this thing I already showed you that thing now I use this and then the main thing of this is the two doombecks I have here I have a low and a high so let's listen to the low rhythm first So I like had this kind of rhythm happening. And a lot of times I keep it kind of loose. I don't like to quantize too much. I will, but so let's hear what the high doombacks doing over that. A little more active. this fast thing happening at the end there for the build. Now it's important, to, let's look at the panning of this because this is important. The high doom back I put to the right a little bit and then the lower doom back is to the left. So we have a nice, we're covering a lot of space there. So there's that. Now, what is this Nikki BD you ask? It's the Nikki Romero kick drum which I like. It's a very electronic-y kick, but it's super punchy, so I use it a lot in these things. And I'll show you what that is. It's just, it's just that. So it's very dry, but super punchy. I get pretty low in the mix here, negative 12 dB. But, and then I have the Hans Zimmer, uh, big-ass percussion here. Um, so this is the low this is the uh, Daiko Ensemble, which is very sort of roomy, actually. Pretty big, but roomy. So in my mind, I'm thinking that kind of sounds far away. I mean, it's epic, but it's far away. So what I do is I double that with the Nicky Romero. And you get that more, a closer one. So it's more in your face, kind of. 
And then also the epic big. Right? So let's listen to all the percussion together for a second. I'll put this in too. I'll put this uh, loop in here just for. See, so you have all these layers happening, right? Things close, things further away. There's a lot of depth to this. And a lot of interest as far as with the dumbak here, which is kind of the central element. And you know, you have the big. So you have this nice contrast happening in the percussion. Let's listen to the whole part here again together. Okay, so the next section is it's sort of going back to the intro briefly. So we have the drones happening when you have this ostinato in the cimbalum, which is sort of like um, harpsichord. Well, no, no, it's, it's a like a hammer dulcimer kind of thing. So you have all those kind of, so you have this happening. Kind of builds the tension because we keep this ostinato pattern with the center and the cimbalum. So we have this run into the... Okay, but, and then, you know, so there's some drone stuff happening here. We have this. And then also the desert wind stuff and the gravity from before. That's a cool kind of evolving drone. But what really builds the tension, I think, is what I'm doing with the sound design here. So let's just listen to that because we have some risers happening. Slow kind of riser. Yeah, from gravity. And this is the next section I have these drops here, but but there's also if you notice there's like a the sub bass thing happening. Right? With this hit. Check this out. Okay. So that's that section. Now we get into what I call the B section, which is, so we can think of this more as like a interlude here, um, an episode, um, it draws from the, from the introduction. And then we have this B section, which is this. So there's a lot of things happening here. Let's talk about this. Um, the central element, I think, and what I, how I thought of this with this, uh, uh, that sort of drop, was actually this string sample that I made um, using some VSL strings. And what I did was, 
I made this drop, and I actually used this in, in the, one of the Bunny Man soundtracks. So it's a quarter tone string drop. So it drops a quarter tone. Actually, I can play it for you on this, so... So this is when I'm playing it, just with the keyboard. So I actually sampled each one of these notes separately. So it's not pitch shifted. Okay, and I have obviously a lot of reverb on it. I'm using the Valhalla with eight seconds. Using so it's pretty uh, 20 millisecond pre-delay, eight second decay. Pretty much sticking with the presets for this uh, random space. So that's the central issue. Here. Um, and I also I wanted it more to have more attack, so I doubled it with these spiccatos here. So you get the more more of that attack, right? And actually, let's hear it with some of the spiccatos and the other strings here. So now there's other things that are sort of dropping here in pitch, and that brings us to the brass for a second. So I, I have some interesting things happening here with these trombones. In fact, let's uh, let me solo just the trombones and show you what's happening here, and I'll talk about the idea I had with the trombones and the electric guitar. So here are the trombones. And if we look at what's happening here, let me show you the tenor trombones. I have it doing <coughs> these uh, pitch drops. Oops, I wanted to solo that. Hold on. Show you that. So I drew some drops in here pitch wise. Join these for a second. Now these are dropping at different times. That's the interesting thing, and I'll show you that. The tenor trombones and these nasty trombones that are from uh, Sin samples, I think. So check it out. So see, they're staggered. So it's creating this cool kind of effect and then these on the bottom are just the more of the attack and it's staying on the same pitch so all together you're getting some interesting cluster effects here if I solo the brass Now, let me talk. I'm going to talk about what ha what's happening between the brass and guitars because this was an idea that I had. Um, so for electric guitars, I have a. This is me playing actually through an amp. Um, I recorded through my Rivera amp. Some distorted tones. I don't know. If, I can't remember what pedal I used, but it's pretty pretty epic. But I tuned the guitar down to C, I think. So I had a open C tuning, like a C and G here, just for this. All right. So that's just playing the chord, power chord there. Well, that's weird. I left that in, but anyway. But check it out with the trombones, because the brass, because it's really interesting how they're going together here. Listen to this. It's getting really kind of a brutal type clustery thing. That's very aggressive. 
impressive. And I also combine it with this this sting here of the gravity. Which is a faster drop. So we'll listen to these elements together here. Um, okay, so that's those elements here. The final thing we're going to talk about is the, for this section, is the percussion. Oh, also, actually, let's talk about some loops here. What are these loops? I don't know why it's called Kachuk Electron Accent, but <laughs> I don't know. So I've run out of naming uh, ideas, and I do stuff like that. So what is this thing? that. It's a little accent. And then I use this evolve loop. And then this uh, deep percussion bed. It's all together with the Kachuk electron beat. So this just adds another layer to what's happening. Kind of percussive. And now, the idea I had with the percussion was... I mean, obviously we're going to accent those lower things, and that's an obvious thing. Right, so I have the low accents here. Let me just show you that. Once again, using the Nicky Romero. So here's the... Right. So that's pretty obvious. It's good though, it works. But, I wanted a little something interesting happening with the doombacks again. So, I have in the low doomback, which is just keeping the steady rhythm going. Kind of pushing it forward. But what I wanted to do was, I wanted to, with the high doom back, I wanted to have it kind of a call and answer thing with the lower drums. So let me just, I'll put the June in here and the Nicky Romero for a second and just listen to what's happening with this high doom back. I'll take the low one out for now. So that's really moving it forward, kind of. It's giving that cool call and response thing. So we'll bring it in with the let's bring it in with the other percussion here for a second. Okay, I didn't do any EQ in the doomback, so that's fine. I don't know what... let's talk about EQ for a second. Alright, with this HZ, I did a little EQing here. What did I do? I took a little bit of the bottom end out because it, it was a little too much. Especially when you combine it with the Nicky Romero bass, line, uh, bass drum there. And finally I have these swells here, which is going to lead us to the next part. But let's also hear it with the loops here. Let's see, so here's all the percussion with the loops. to the next part. Alright, so let's listen to everything together again. Okay, then we'll talk about the next part next, which features the strings. And I wanted it to kind of take away the rhythmic elements and make it a little more, open it up a little bit. 
uh, it's more of a triumphant kind of section. So let's listen to the full section before I break it up. Here. So some of you <laughs> may be worried about this, but we're going to address that. Um, I don't obsess about that in this at this stage, um, so we're not going to worry about that. But that's it's pretty high there, and it's you, you don't want to generally <laughs> go into the red. But when I stem out, it's not going to be an issue. But that's something we're going to have to look at when we do mix the final stems. Okay. So let's break this up here. Let me just play the string section um, so you can hear what the strings are doing. Because this is what, what the, I would say this is the heart of, of this, um, what I'm calling the C section. So the previous section was the B section. This is now the C section. So basically the whole form of the piece is intro A, an episode that draws from the in, intro B, C, B, and then there's going to be a coda. So here's the C section. Here we go. Just strings. samples here. Okay. I don't know why that first violin. Hold on, let me listen to this. Alright. So here's this is obviously the main melody here is in the the, uh, the violins. I doubled the morale violins. Um, from Spitfire with CSS. And the reason for it is these are more roomy, the morale. Whereas the CSS are more close, sort of uh, more intimate. So when you combine them, you get a nice, nice balance here. So that's why I did that. So here's like I said, this is our main melody here in the violins one and two. Now we're not going to talk too much about the composition of this, but it's pretty simple. But a lot of this is something you don't notice, but it's there. Is I added this counter line in the viola. So check this out. When it, when it comes back for the second pass. Alright, wait, something happened. Let me uh, join this up for a second. Sorry, so I'm going to start here. So you can hear that counter line.
Okay, so so that's what's happening with the strings. And we have this the pizzicato doubling this um, the uh, centur or the uh, plucked per, per, uh, plucked strings here. The violas are divisi, so the second section is playing this at the octave here. Alright, so that's doubling. Doubling this. Which sort of harkens back. I wanted to incorporate a little of that element from the beginning of the piece into this section so that it's not a complete. Uh, shift of, of uh, I mean there is a shift there but I wanted to to make it more uh, make sense more like that okay so anyway after the first couple passes here actually actually af after the first pass of the strings the um, we have a swell in the percussion then the the um, choir comes in Let's listen to just the choir for a second. Pretty much doubling what the strings are doing. But. important element and that's clipping a little but that's okay because this the sopranos here get kind of loud in fact did I do any I'm not doing any automation here really so now you'll notice I combine the sopranos from the Freya library with Voxos and then also I'm using I'm using the Omnisphere um, swells here to give it a little dynamic kind of right. So I find that combining all these different libraries can really add to the texture of it. So don't be afraid to to add libraries together like That's that. Now, after the first C here, I made a decision here. I was going to bring in the percussion here, right with the choir, but I thought we'd give the choir, and this is what I'm talking about with the arrangement. It's very important. In fact, it's a huge part of mixing and mastering. That's why I'm going through all the arrangement here, and we're not talking so much about mixing right now. But I wanted to have this choir first, so you really as the listener focuses in on the choir and we're kind of building it. And then I came in here with the percussion. So you have the strings by themselves. And then the choir comes in. We have a hit there. Okay, and now here comes the uh, percussion. Before I talk about the percussion, though, we, we talked about this already. Um, the piano is doubling some stuff. I'm not really talking about the piano that much because it's just sort of reinforcing other things. Um, that was, like I said, the scratch track that I decided to keep some of it in. But but I want to talk about when the choir comes in, I also brought in the horns here um, to add to that color shift, right? So here are the horns. Just doing the chords here. Basically, I wanted the whole orchestra to play in this part. Um. So 
So now, by, there's some interesting things in the woodwinds too that I want to talk about. I did some actually runs here that, with the harp run, there's also a big sort of harp run here. And what does that do? Let's listen to that. Just, so that ushers in the choir. And what it is, if we look at it, it's a, a harp glissandi. It's a minor melodic run starting on uh, in G, right? Because I had actually like a different scale in mind, um, but this is the closest thing to what I was looking for. So, but I was looking for a more of an exotic scale. I guess I could have played it, but I like the sound of these runs. And for the flute, we did it. Another run here. It's very quiet. But it's there. And it's doubled with the octave below. Right, so that with the harp kind of adds some stuff. It's a little gesture to bring us into the choir there. So it's, it's sort of a minute detail, but... And then I doubled the melody, when the choir comes in, I doubled the melody with the... with the legato... winds. So, that the octave here. Another run there, right? In fact, let's just slow the one. Here I brought in the piccolo to really sort of reinforce and another run, the piccolo run there, to lead us into that. So we really got a lot of top to this now. Especially there, very, uh, just wanted to be really epic. There. <laughs> thing there. Alright, so let's get back to what we're doing here in the percussion. It's some interesting processing going on, I think. I think I added some distortion to one of the snares. Let's listen to just percussion here. So that snare is pretty... I mean, when you hear it separate, it's kind of ridiculous, but in the mix, it works. Because I wanted a, a longer snare. So these are once again, you know, the, the low end is just this sort of the Nicky Romero with uh, the Hans Zimmer and the June doing this accent again. Accent is, it's from the B section, right? Which we're going to eventually get into. But. So, but what I wanted to talk about was what's happening with the snare here. There's a lot of processing on this. This is um. So this is a snare from Damage. That's sort of. Let me just show you what it's doing without the processing for a second. Okay, so there's some bass in there that I didn't want. In fact, let me do this. I'm just gonna loop it here so we can. So what I did was took out some of that bass, let me show you. Also took some of this top end off, starting at like 2K. So I did a high pass um, from around 200, right? To get rid of that bass. So listen again. All right, so I didn't want that in there because that's going to interfere with the bass and the other stuff. So I did that. I also put some big reverb on it, right? Which is just a Valhalla. I was actually going to that before the EQ, for some reason. So it was four seconds, long pre-delay at 71. The reason for that is I wanted it to sound close, and then to have that tail that's sort of far away. So. And then I put on the API compressor. See, it gives it that attack, right? 
so I have the set a pretty um, not super fast attack time, so we're, so we're getting that transient there. Went with a new loud hard tone here. So if you hear the difference without it, see we, we don't have as much attack. Watch, we have that nice bite now. So and I doubled it with this snare. Sorry, which is just sort of. Pretty traditional sounding snare. I did a little EQ on it. I boosted 200 for some reason. Get some of the bass, well, uh, some of the low mids there, and 5k. Nothing major. But also I put the API in it to get that bite. So we hear the snares together. Also, they're staggered, if you notice. I wanted to flam. So I'm flamming between the two different samples here. So it's really sort of interesting thing happening with the crusher. Like I said, on its own, it sounds a little crazy, but with everything else. Okay, so that's that. And then we come back to the B section, which is unchanged. The difference is now. Oh, it's a little different. Now I brought in, you notice what I did here, I brought in this this melody which happens in the C section, comes back. But now, it has a different root here, it has, this is kind of interesting, oops has a D in the bass, I think. Which totally changes the character of it. Because if we go back to here... Where we have kind of like a... G minor-ish thing happening, I guess. Right? Then we go to C and then we go to this D. So it gives it kind of an eerie vibe here. So it's so I wanted to bring that back in a different sort of guise, right? And then we just have this the Mid Eastern stuff up. The drones and the Dudek. This kind of takes us out of the piece, right? And that's it. Um, in the next episode, we're going to talk about stemming it out, how I, what, what, what I did for the stems, and I'll open up another session and show you the stems that I have. And also, um, then we'll talk about mixing, how we mix it, and, and the processing that we do. As far as processing, on, I'm just going to go through now quickly to see if I did any other processing here before we end this. Um, okay, some of the things are going to reverb, but other than that, right, right, there's a lot of, not much going on in terms of processing. So this is all the uh, sound design stuff. Guitar, I did a little processing, right? Let me just show you that quickly. Um... Basically, I high pass because I didn't want the lows to interfere with the lows in the other instruments too much. So I, I did a little high pass here. Also brought some 5K out. I used two different guitars for this, so... 
but the processing is very similar. High pass, and then a little top end here. So nothing that crazy. They're going to a plate though too. Actually one of them is. They both should have. I don't know why that was off. but So they're both going to a Valhalla plate. Which let me show you how that's set. Steely guitar space. Alright, so it's very short plate. 0.7 seconds. Not super short. But. So you hear it there, but very subtly. It just gives it a little more... Um, a little more dimension, I would say. Okay, so that's that. Any other processing? Some of the loops here, no. Percussion. That delay I showed you on the Chang Chang there. Uh, timpani swell is going to... Uh, oh, I'm using the Phoenix verb on this. It's a really good reverb. A lot of Not a lot of people know about it, but it's a very natural sounding reverb. If I solo this oh, timpani swell here, okay, so that's that. Nothing major. Zoom back. I showed you this a little bit of a cut of the lows on the HZ um, Hans Zimmer um, Daiko. Just showed you this processing for the snare. Let me close these out. Choir. Going to some of the reverb, the Phoenix reverb. So, nothing major. using the same reverb for, for everything pretty much to give it that unity strings a little reverb here and there but no uh, EQing really brass reverb woodwinds reverb yeah so that's it pretty much Okay, so yeah, the, that concludes this part of the of the series here. We're gonna have two parts. So the next part, like I said, we're gonna do mixing and uh, of, and stemming out. Actually, I'll show you the, the stems, and then I'll show you how I mixed the stem stems and uh, any processing that I did and the master bus and stuff like that. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.